We are at the K-Love Awards in Nashville, Tennessee, and right now we have the pleasure of sitting down with Josh Wilson. You may know him from some of his hit songs, Savior Please, Carry Me, and I Refuse. Josh, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Was there ever, was it ever a question in your mind whether you were going to go into mainstream um, mm. singing or, or not really? I guess I always just wrote songs about what came most naturally to me, and that, that was my faith. Uh, so songs of gratitude for what God's done, songs of asking questions about my faith and what does it mean to be a Christian, songs that uh, hopefully provide hope and a reminder of why we believe what we believe, mm -hmm. songs that challenge us to be the hands and feet of Jesus. They just always came naturally because that's the language I was using in in life with my friends and with folks that I went to school with and church with and college. And so when I sat down to write a song, it, it just came naturally. I don't know that I ever had to make a conscious decision to sing about my faith. It just, yeah, my, my passion for Jesus and my passion for music just fit pretty seamlessly together. Do you ever feel the tug from the fame of a more mainstream market or not really? No, actually being an introvert, um, I don't necessarily desire fame. Um, <laughs> I, uh, since I was young, struggled with uh, a, a pretty decent degree of anxiety. And, really? Yeah. And so it's the fact that I get up on stage and sing uh, or do interviews or go on the radio, it's it's a kind of an act of faith for me is stepping out and saying, God, I believe you've called me to do this. And so I certainly, uh, on that level, don't desire to be famous. But then just, I mean, I'm glad I'm not super famous because, you know, if you're really famous, you can't even go out in public, <laughs> uh, can't go to the mall or anything. Well, what's so. that like? I mean, I'm sure you get recognized sometimes and you hear your song on the radio. What is that feeling like? It's fun. Uh, it, it doesn't happen a whole lot to me. Um, but when you're it does, humble too. oh, I don't know. It's it's when it when it happens, I'm very honored. Um, you know, it, it, it occasionally will happen in the airport, uh, mm. in random places. But uh, no, it's a lot of fun. And of course, hearing hearing my songs on the radio, um, that wasn't as weird as I thought it was going to be because during the recording process, you're hearing your song back again and again and again and again and again. So when you hear it on the radio, you're just hearing it play back again. Mm -hmm. You've heard that recording. What's weird is when they go, "That's Josh Wilson with oh, Carry cool. Me," you know, and you think, "Man, that, there's, they just said my name on the radio." So that's pretty cool. But I will say, the first time I heard my song on the radio. It was not, uh, you know, the movie, That Thing You Do. It mm -hmm. was not that. I, that's kind of what I was expecting, like cruising through the town, turning on all the radios, calling my mom, <laughs> mom, I'm on the radio. Um, I was working construction with mm. a friend here in town, working hourly, because uh, I didn't have a lot of gigs at the time. And my friend had said, hey, I heard your song on the radio, and they told me what station here in Nashville. So at the construction site, I was with my buddy, and I said, hey, can we open up the car door and leave this station going? so I can hear my song. And uh, he said, yeah, that's fine. We, we went probably six hours before I heard it. And, wow. and when it finally came on, I was carrying this giant load of two by fours. And uh, you dropped this, them. The song came on and I dropped them. <laughs> and I said, my friend's name is Randall. Randall, Randall. And he had the nail gun on. So he turned off the air compressor, pulled off his mask, his goggles. And he said, what? And I said, that's my song. And we sit there and we listen. How but, surreal. And, well, then it finished and he goes, that's great, man. Get back to work. Get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that'll I, bring you right back. Down. I know. I was like, well, a dose of humble pie. So that was the first time I heard my song on the radio. But How cool. it's it's an honor to hear my song on the radio. Um, you know, K Love plays my music, and knowing that uh, thousands and millions of people are hearing my music, that's humbling because I I, I have these songs that I want to share with people, and there's no way that I could do that on my own. And there's so many parties involved to finally get it to the listener. And that's that's why it's humbling knowing there's no way I could do that by yeah. myself. Where does the inspiration behind your songs come from? I just take notes on life. Um, writing, of all the, the, th the three things I spend my time doing, writing, recording, and touring, mm -hmm. um, I think that my favorite is a toss up between recording and touring because I love being in the studio and I love playing live. Writing is hard for me. Uh, because you've got this thing that doesn't exist mm -hmm. and you're going to bring it into existence. And now here's this song that yesterday was literally not around. Uh, but the way I do it is I just, I journal and I, I want, you know, here's something I want to write a song about. Here's something my pastor said. Here's a quote. Here's something my wife said I want to write. So I collect ideas 
And then the way I treat my writing is I, I sit down like it's a work day. Um, because it is, it's work. Because that hard is. Work. That's your life. I mean, it's, that is your is. job. It is. And it's, you know, um, since the fall, the ground has been cursed. And I think um, writing songs, it's, it's the ground fighting back. It's not easy. You, you don't, for me, I don't just sit down and, you know, it's not like God is guiding the pen. And, and I know there's songs written in that kind of inspiration that happen like that. Right. And th there's been a few like that for me. But most of it is just sitting down and being faithful to what I feel like God has called me to do. And that's to communicate the truth of who uh, he is and and his goodness in my music. And so mm -hmm. I, I take out those notes and I, I start playing, I start singing, and I, I sort of use a conglomeration of all that to make my songs. Well, you said you love to tour. I feel like that, Not if you ask a lot of people, they probably wouldn't love tour life because I'm sure it gets very grueling and mm. you have a wife and you're yeah. expecting a baby, which is awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. October 30th. That Our is first so child. exciting. Are you are you nervous? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I'm also excited. I'm I'm scared and and ready and not ready and we're gonna wait to find out if it's a boy or girl mm -hmm. until we have it. So we're gonna be surprised and uh, yeah, that's that, so touring. I enjoy I enjoy playing concerts. The travel, the logistics, the lack of sleep, the sleeping in weird places. Like <laughs> that's that. There's, there's no glamour in that. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the hour or two I spend on stage sharing the music, that's what I love. Yeah. I got a buddy, he says, uh, I'll play concerts for free, you gotta pay me to travel. <laughs> so I feel that way sometimes. What makes you most nervous about being a dad? I'm nervous to, to when, my, when my child starts asking questions I don't have the answers to. Mm. And I've already decided I'm just gonna be honest. I'm not gonna pretend I have all the answers because I don't and that, that's not helpful in a conversation and so you know, when those hard questions about faith uh, come up, I'm, I, I hope I don't give any just pat answers. I hope I can say, that's something I've been really curious about. Let's dive into that together. Let's see what the Bible has to say. Um, and and so I'm, I think I'm, I'm a little nervous because I'm a person that likes to have answers, uh -huh. um, but I don't think there's answers to every question out there. And, and I'm, I'm kind of nervous about them asking me those questions. That's so exciting. I mean, a dad plays such a critical role in a child's life, and mm. that's an exciting season for you coming up. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. And not knowing if it's a boy or a girl, I'm, I'm excited about different things for each. So it's all in God's hands. Right. Well, one of the things that I wanted to ask you about was I read that back in 2010, you had a flight delay. <laughs> and so you were in the Newark airport. Yes. And you kind of <clears throat> did this impromptu concert. Yeah, actually, I just gotten married, and uh, I had a flight delay yesterday. I could have used you there. Uh, well, listen, this was the flight delay of all flight delays. <laughs> there was someone we didn't know what was going on at the time. Someone jumped the security line to go kiss their girlfriend goodbye, but wow. because they jumped the security line and like TSA lost them, they shut down the whole airport. We didn't know why. They were just saying everybody leave, and so we're kind of freaking out, and we all. We all left the security area and had to wait outside, not outside, outside, but outside the security portion for six hours, just waiting, six mm. hours. So, so our flight time had come and gone. And my buddy, he had a guitar and he hands it to me. He goes, you should stand up and play a song. And I, it's like midnight and I look around at these disgruntled passengers with <laughs> suitcases that can be thrown at my head. And I'm like, dude, that is not a good idea. I'm not <laughs> gonna play a song. And then my new wife says, yeah, you should play a song. I was like, oh no. I have to now. Now I have to. Gotta impress my wife. <laughs> so I was like, okay, if I'm if this is gonna work, I've gotta play a song everybody knows. Mm -hmm. So I picked Hey Jude by the Beatles, stood up, realized I don't know Hey Jude by the Beatles. So oh, no. <laughs> um, don't make it, take us. All the words are different until the nanas. And so I was like, let's get to the nanas. And so sure <laughs> enough, we got there, everybody started singing and it ended well. It started kind of kind of weak and shaky, but I'm telling you, when I was tuning the guitar, my hands. Especially with your anxiety, I, which oh, you man, already It was like borderline panic attack. Right? Yes. That's crazy. Yeah. But it turned out great and the video went viral and it was a lot of fun there for a little bit. Sounds like it worked out well. Um, yeah. Really quickly, before we wrap up, I want to hear about this new album that yeah. you have coming out that you're about to release. Yes. So the album, uh, the title track, That Was Then, This Is Now, and that's the first single from the record. The whole album is, is about who we are in Christ, um, who we were before Christ, which is completely dead, mm. who we are now, which is 180 degrees brought back to life, and then who we're going to be someday 
when we finally meet Jesus face to face. So it's, it's, the album is kind of the before and the between. I heard this at the National Rescue Mission a few weeks ago. The before and the between, the after comes later. Mm-hmm. I thought that is so good. Yeah. Because it's not a true. It's there is a before and after, but there's an after after. And that's what it's about. Romans 8, 1, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Mm. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. We've got another song called No More. Uh, It's about the same thing. No more guilt, no more shame, no more thinking I can't change. Who I was is dead and gone. Who I am is is moving on. And then it goes on to say, I am condemned no more. And the album sort of explores this in-between area of who I was, who I'm going to be, and who I am now. So there's still songs of struggle. There's songs of angst, of... You know, you see that in the Psalms. Um, yeah, I believe help my unbelief, uh, and and so it's it's kind of the what what does it mean to be a Christian? What does it mean to be f- forgiven and free? What does it mean to have no condemnation in our lives? And that's why I call it that was then, and this is now.